they decided to do it that way? Um, well, it took me about um, about a year and a half to actually figure out how to play. Uh, because I had everybody, you know, all we can play with a slide, tried that. Uh, you have to have some, excuse me, some fingers behind the slide to meet the strings to be able to control it. So it wouldn't work for me. Um, I tried everything. I tried playing with my other hook. Um, with the hook part wouldn't work. Um, and uh, about a year and a half later, I was sitting in my house. And I was on the phone. I had a uh, headset phone that just kind of clipped onto my belt. And uh, at that time, I was using the eraser from a pencil uh, as to move my mouse, uh, to use the top ball mouse on the computer. And um, and I had the pencil in my hand, or in my hook, um, talking on the phone. Had a guitar in my lap. And for some reason, I put the eraser down on the string, on the fret, and I plucked it, and I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is, <laughs> you know? So I started playing with by the hook, and I would chord with the rubber band. And it's pretty much the same way I'm doing, doing here. Um, and, but the thing, I was going through rubber bands like nobody's business. I mean, the strings would just rip them apart. So I was pro constantly going to my prosthetics you know, getting new rubber bands. So they finally fitted uh, this thing that went over my rubber bands that I used to play with. Um, but about five years ago, well actually about seven years ago, I started getting tattooed. Uh, because, just because. No, no real reason, you know, just because. Um, and um, uh, naturally, you know, after I'd get a tattoo, couldn't wear the hook on the song. So I started going without it. That's what kind of got me used to. But that was a good thing because before that, I was so ashamed of the way I looked that nobody ever saw me without my hooks on. Nobody. Now I don't care. This is who I am. You know, if you don't like it, well, it's not my problem. You know, but I still wanted to play guitar too. So I started, you know, playing like this, you know. Um, and to me, that's a more solid sounding, you know. And, you know, and I can also. You know, so I have a little bit more control over what I'm doing. And um, so that's basically why. You know, and, and the nat most natural thing for me is to play, you know, in my lap because I can't, I have no downstroke. I mean, I have downstroke, but I have no upstroke. Because if I do, I'm going to just rip these strings right out of this guitar. Uh, because the, the, my fingers don't have to get, you know. So um, that's basically why. And, um, you know, uh, I never, you know, I, I couldn't figure out how I was going to do it at all, you know. I mean, while I was laying in the hospital bed, I was only in the hospital for a week. I had my hands chopped off, cut off, and I was out in the week. So, uh, <laughs> um, but the whole time I was there, uh, the only thing I could think about was what kind of tattoos can I get to cover up these scars, and what kind of contraption can I come up with that I can play guitar again with, you know. But like I told you, my surgeon said I'd never play guitar again. No. <laughs> yeah, but um, but the, the 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 song that I just played you, I have a video of me playing that on YouTube, and it's my most viewed YouTube video. Is that on your website? Um, it should be. You can, there's access to my videos. Um, Hook74.com. Yeah. Hook74.com. Hook seven. You know, just look up Hook74 on YouTube. Um, you know it's. You know, is that, is that the one? Yeah. And, um, you know, it has access to my Twitter account, my Facebook music page, uh, my Reverb Nation page, my SoundCloud page, so you can check out all my original music. Um, you know, and, um, you know, and, you know, yes, I do call myself the world's best no hand guitar player. <laughs> you know, because uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that 
You know, you, uh, here's the thing. You can find a lot of people that play with their feet. As you guys probably know, there's a guy named George Dennehy that is in this area that plays with his feet. And there's also a guy that about 10, 15 years ago played with his feet for the Pope. And, uh, you know, so that you, you can find a few people. There's a guy actually out in San Francisco that plays with his feet also that's missing both his arms. Um, you'll find a lot of guys that are missing one hand play guitar. There's only one me. There's only one me. Look at you. I'm it. I'm it. There's nobody else in the world that plays like I do. Nobody else. And so that's how I can call myself the world's best no hand in <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have a question you want to ask? Because I know we're running out of time. But... Um, well, I noticed that you are bringing your left foot up quite a bit. When you play at home, do you have a block or something the rest of the way down? No. Does it this, help this, you with? This chair is a little higher than what I'm used to. That's the only thing. And so I'm having to kind of prop my foot up so that the guitar doesn't just slide right off. Did you ever play with black cool stand up? Yeah, I used to when I was in when I had my band. I swore to myself and everybody else that I would not play a show sitting down. And so I did. I had to uh, put my guitar on a keyboard stand and had a platform up under it to raise it up to where it was just basically sitting up on a platform stand and I would just walk up to it and play it. So, and there's actually a video of that up there too on my YouTube channel. Yes. Um, first of all, thanks so much for coming. This is Oh, you're it's very well. It's so my wonderful. pleasure. My um, pleasure. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I just had a really quick question. I really, from this, I'm really taking away, like, don't ever tell the, the client how to feel. Like, that really yeah. stuck with me. Is there anything else that you can think of that um, you really want us to know since we're, you know, we're going to be practitioners soon? Um, just keep in mind that when you come in contact with these people, they're going to be in the worst place in their life. That's really it. And don't ever tell a patient that they should be able to do something because it's all individual, you know? I mean, um, it, it took me two years to figure out how to do this, and I knew how to play beforehand, you know? So, I mean, the knowledge was there, but the, the you know, how to do it, I had to figure out. It took me two years to do it, you know? So, it, and it, it took me two years to figure out, you know, I just happened to tie my shoes. I was visiting some people out in Austin, Texas, and I was sitting in the living room, and one of the guys that was living there was laying on the couch, and I was just, had these boots on, and I started messing with the laces on the boots, and he was watching me, and I was like, oh, dude, don't, you know, I said, I'm not gonna be able to tie these things, and the next thing you know, I'm like, huh, <laughs> you know, so it's like, I guess I did. You know, so I mean, you know, it's, it's you know, and then two, when you guys meet these people, they're not gonna be motivated to tie their shoes. They're not gonna be mine. You know, so you you know, like I said, just be patient. Just be patient. And you know, and it, it'll work out better in the long run, you know, because they're, you know, like I said, they're in their darkest days. Anything else? How did you begin to trust your occupational therapist? You said you had to build a relationship. I never did. No. No. Well the, where I was, I never had I had I had one at a different place, and then I had two at another place. Actually, I, I take that back. Those two, I actually trusted. They're two good-looking girls. I was 23. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I had fun with them, you know. Um, but uh, but I had a, I had a, an occupational therapist that took me to the gym, took me to the pool, and then I had an also, another occupational therapist that took me to the kitchen, and I didn't like her, you know, because. <laughs> You know, she's like, well, you've got to learn how to crack this egg. No, I don't. They make egg beaters now. <laughs> <laughs> All I got to do is open the carton, pour them out. I don't have to learn how to crack an egg. You know, so, you know, but, you know, but at the same time, the more she pushed me, she had to push me as hard as she did, I wouldn't have gotten as far as I did. So, you know, as the, you know, I mean, it's, you know, most of the people that pushed me hard in my life, I hated them at the time, but I look back on it now and it's like, man, I appreciate that so much, you know, because I had the kind of family that, you know, they weren't, no, they weren't going to wipe my butt for me. They weren't going to tie my shoes for me. They weren't going to, you know, baby me and do everything for me because if they had, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. And I thank them for doing that, you know, because, I mean, I was living by myself six months afterwards and have lived by myself up until I got married. It was like I was telling 
Tony earlier, you know, I've gotten spoiled having a wife, you know, <laughs> because, you know, she doesn't let me cook in the kitchen. So I don't cook in the kitchen. I do grill, though, you know. And keep in mind, people with metal hooks, they do not need potholders. <laughs> <laughs> I can just reach right in the oven and pull it out of the and, um, you know, I don't have to worry about hangnails or anything like that, <laughs> you know. And yes, I do go to the uh, nail shop and get a patty every now and again. So, because it's kind of hard to cut my toenails. So, yeah. And, yes. What brought you to Richmond? My wife. My wife. And, because uh, this was, uh, she has uh, a son from a previous marriage. And um, he was about five years old when we got married. And um, when I was about 10, 11 years old, my mom got married. And we moved to another town. I lost all my friends, lost everything I knew, and I just wasn't going to do that to him. You know, he had connections, he had family here and everything else, and so, so I wasn't going to do it to him. You know, it just what well, didn't seem fair because I knew it wasn't fair to me. You know, so and um, you know, but it was so funny, you know. First time I met him, he's five years old. He's crossing his fingers. I bet you can't do that. <laughs> you know, but I have a two-year-old daughter that I whipped out my body-powered hands for the first time yesterday, and she was like, "Uh, don't like." <laughs> She's used to daddy with the, the hook and the arms. You know, she'd come up to me and hand, hand. And she'll grab me by my arm and she'll lead me around the house, and, you know. So she's, she doesn't really get the fact that daddy doesn't have any hands. So, and, um, and I doubt she, I mean, I imagine at some point in time she will, you know. But at that point she'll be like, you better shut up. That's my daddy. <laughs> so, but uh, anything else? You can ask me anything. It took a while that it, did you need to toughen up the skin to work on the strings? Uh, I still do. It's a little calloused right there, but every now and again when I play a lot, I'll get a slit right there in the crease of that skin and it'll just be slit. Uh, it'll just be open. I, there, uh, it's not there now, but uh, there was actually a time where I was sitting there playing and I was working on a song and I kept messing up and kept having to start over and kept having to start over. And it was at one point where I was sitting there playing and I started seeing blood. And, and Huh? You know, blisters on my fingers. Yes. Yeah. You know, so I literally played till my, you know, I, well, now, here, to, to, to play into your fingers, but there's this thing that, you know, I wanted to, you know, back when I was playing guitar, you know, I was in a band and everything else, I wanted to do a shot of me with the guitar strapped on me with, like, you know, fake blood dripping from my thing. You know, I actually played till my fingers wore off. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. But I had too many people go, you know, that's just kind of morbid. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, but, you know, so. Okay, one more question. One more. Oh, I was just going to ask, do you have sensation? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's, you know, um, now, there are times when I feel like it, I'm itching here, but I have to scratch over here to get it if that makes sense, mm -hmm. because my nerve endings are all bubbled up in there. And every now and again, I feel like my hands are like all, like fist, in a, in a fist and tied up and bound and are just stuck in my arms. And if I could just cut my arms open and just let them loose, they'd be out. I just not worry about it. Because <laughs> yeah, I've, I mean, I, I've spent way too many days with both the ends of my arms and my eye sockets going, do you see that they're not there? You see, I mean, but I, I still have phantom pains. Uh, the phantom pains, and this is something that y'all will need to know, phantom pains do not go away. They do not go away. I don't care what you've heard, what anybody will tell you. They do not go away. They get better. They get less uh, often. They never lose their intensity. Um, you know, because I can still to this day be sitting somewhere and just, whoo, you know, because it you know, feels like I have electricity shooting out of the end of my finger. Um, feels like sometimes where somebody has got the um, my pinky finger, uh, they take a you know feels like somebody's putting needles up under my fingernails. Um, then it feel, at times it feels like somebody is taking a pair of pliers and has one of my fingers as like the knuckle and the joint 
and you're squeezing it. And usually I can tell you what finger, what part of the finger 